Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about distributors. Uh, well, at least for those of us who still use them. Uh, there's a few nuances that uh, that I want to talk about regarding distributors, regarding their the gear type, uh, the material, the gear that needs to be used, the pickups, how to remove them, how to install them, and so on and so forth. So uh, anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. What we have here is an MSD billet distributor part number 8456, I believe. So these are mo your most popular ones for, uh, you know, a TFI uh, module distributor mounted 8.2 deck, five liter block. This is what we all get if you're gonna use one of these. This one uh, is gonna be pretty much just used for parts. It's a little far beyond gone and I really don't wanna send it back to MSD and I'll show you why it needs to be sent back uh, for a complete rebuild, but I'm just going to use some parts off of it. But I want to cover a couple topics about these things. Um, they look pretty. Um, they have a nice construction, nice shiny billet, which I actually polished this one because, like I said, I was going to use it at one point. Um, not anymore. But um, good construction. They, they look really nice. Uh, they're complete. They have uh, the right gear if you're going to use a hydraulic roller cam. I'm going to cover that in just a second. But there's a few things. Uh, well, mainly one big thing about these aftermarket distributors, no matter which one you get, that I want to cover, and that is the distributor pickup. Okay. Um, the pickup is located inside here, and it consists of the magnet, there's a reluctor wheel that's on the distributor, which if you can see the veins on that wheel. And the main part of the pickup is the yellow part, which is where your TFI module mounts into. Okay, and how this thing works is as the distributor spins, this reluctor wheel has veins and the veins are separated in eight equal parts, one of which has a smaller, of course I can't spin everything and hold the camera at the same time, but there's a smaller vein on this wheel, there it is right there, and that is used to trigger what's called the number one uh, cylinder, so that's, that's the count. And that's basically, in essence, if you want to think about it, it's a cam position sensor for all intents and purposes. And without going into too much detail about how these things work, because they are primitive, but they definitely work when they work well, um, is as the rotation occurs, a signal is sent via this magnet. That magnet creates a magnetic field. There's, there's lines of force through induction as soon as that vein crosses through that magnet, the magnetic field is collapsed. When the magnetic field is collapsed, the current is induced and sent through the electronics to the output to the TFI module, which receives the signal and sends it back through the harness to the computer to trigger the firing order, which will in turn fire the injectors and the coil at the same time. So, um, that's a basic rundown of how these things work. The aftermarket distributors come with an aftermarket pickup. In other words, the magnet, the main part, the electronics part, and the wire harness that's inside. I don't know if you can see that. But they come with an overseas made, let's just call it politely, um, pickup. They are quite inferior. Uh, they will leave you on the side of the road without warning, okay? Um, so if you're gonna buy one of these distributors, it's gonna cost you a little more, but the cost of not replacing the pickup far outweighs the cost of upgrading the pickup before you use it. It's just what I always like to do. I actually replaced the pickup in this one, but I'm actually gonna remove it since I'm not gonna use this distributor at all, so I'm gonna save it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the roll pin, which I actually just did it. But any distributor is gonna have a roll pin in the uh, gear collar portion 
So just get a good set of uh, steel punches, knock the roll pin out, and once the roll pin is out, we can remove the gear. These are uh, pressed on pretty tightly from the factory. Uh, going back on, you can uh, rem use the same press fit or you can actually take a flapper wheel and hone them out just a little bit uh, to relieve some of the press fit, but it's always good to maintain the press fit. Uh, you know, if you're gonna use like a high pressure pump or a high volume pump, the, you know, obviously the tighter the press, the better it is. So, um, but we're gonna go ahead and remove this gear. The tool I'm gonna use is right here. I believe, guys, I got this at Harbor Freight. I can't remember where I got this thing, but this is what it looks like. It's just a two-prong uh, gear puller, and this is what we're going to use to pull the gear off. So let's set it up. All right, guys, I got it set up, and I'm just going to go ahead and start turning the threaded rod portion and it should start removing this gear. We'll see how tight it is. Now some most of the time you need a uh, a crescent wrench. I believe this one has a 5 8 head to obviously overcome the press fit, but let's just see what this does. I'm just going to turn it. And I can already see it's moving just a little bit. And I'll just get up to the camera. But you can see how this is working. There it goes, sliding off the shaft. So this one had a looser fit. Still had an interference fit, but just a little looser than I'd like, which is one of the reasons I'm not gonna use this. But there's the gear, break this apart. And here is the gear. This is the stock, what's called the melanized gear that comes on the MSD distributors and some of the other aftermarket distributors. Uh, just as good as steel. This is what you want to use on a hydraulic roller cam. Or, for example, if you're going to run, uh, let's just say one of the popular cam companies, uh, their cam part numbers end in a dash eight. This is, the, this is the gear you want to use. You want to use their melanized uh, steel gear for their hydraulic roller cam. So if their part number ends in a dash eight, which most of their hydraulic roller stuff and some of their street roller uh, cams end in a part eight also, or a part number eight. So steel gear is what you want, guys. Uh, the brass or the bronze, uh, I've just don't use them because brass and bronze are a lot softer than a steel Sadie cord or billet steel cord cam, okay? A lot of guys will recommend going to a bronze or a brass. That is a very soft metal. You will be replacing your distributor gear in no time if you're using a hydraulic roller cam. Steel gear, not a cast iron. Cast iron, as I was saying before, let's see here. You can tell a cast iron gear, if you look at the collar, I don't know if you can tell here, this has a very machined finish on the collar. It's very smooth, okay? That is a good sign that it's a steel gear. If it's a cast iron gear, on the collar portion, you'll have that rough cast iron uh, texture, just like a, you know, just like an engine block or what have you. That's the best way to tell these gears apart. But um, anyways, that's the gear portion of how to remove it and what material to use when you're using a hydraulic roller cam. On every distributor, you're going to have a uh, upper end place stop on the bottom of the shaft. And this just obviously it stops the shaft from going up too far up. So your next uh, step in trying to get the main shaft out after you pull the gear off is, again, it's going to have a roll pin, knock that out, and then uh, remove your stop, and then the shaft can slide out.
like that. Then once the roll pin is out, you should be able to just kind of gently tap down on the base and it'll slide the top stop down the shaft. Just like that. And here comes the distributor main shaft. All right, guys, the shaft is out with the reluctor wheel at the top, main housing, top stop collar. And here's your pickup. And the only thing that's holding it in are two bolts at the electronic sensor or the um, yeah, the main electronics part and the main how or the main structure of your Hall effect pickup just slides on to the top of the the distributor um, the shaft riser so once these two screws are out you can just pull up on this assembly and it's good to go this is the pickup you want to use this is a Ford Motorcraft part number DU30-C these are the pickups that you want to use in these distributors um, obviously they're Ford Motorcraft they're going to last a long time they're not going to leave you on the side of the road if it's just a lot it's a lot better to use them guys trust me um again these are the steps that i take on any aftermarket distributor so let's go ahead and remove this and i'll show you what it looks like fully disassembled and it's got a lock washer And here it is out of the distributor. This is what it looks like. That's what you want to use. And of course the magnetic pickup is actually right here. This is where life, life starts right here for a TFI system. Uh, once again, it's got a positive magnet <clears throat> and a negative pole on the other side. And there's always a line of force when that, <clears throat> when that reluctor wheel passes through, when that magnetic field collapses, a voltage is induced, a current is sent to the electronic uh, mount right here goes to your TFI module, which then sends it back to the computer, which the computer adjusts timing and controls injector firing and sends it back to the coil and the injectors. And that's how life starts right here. So um, that's how to remove them, guys. And obviously installation is the inverse. What I have here is a pretty handy tool. It's called the Thexton 415 Ford Distributor Gear Installer and Remover. This is instrumental in disassembling and reassembling a Ford TFI distributor. But I have to stress, this is if you're using a stock housing TFI distributor. Not It won't fit on an MSD as far as the reinstallation for the gear. Um, it will remove the gears, but you'll see here that it will not fit an aftermarket uh, housing distributor for reinstalling the gear. Let me open up the box and I'll show you what I'm talking about. What comes in this box, and by the way, I don't know if they still make these things anymore. Uh, you can find them used online, but uh, I highly recommend getting one if you're gonna work on your distributors and upgrade them you know, with the uh, pickups or swap pickups and gears and whatnot. What comes in the box is you have a C-channel bracket. There's a small parts kit with an O-ring and some other things in there. Um, and each, each piece has a special purpose. And the main part. So as you can see, this is very similar to my other gear removal tool. I actually prefer this tool to remove distributor gears because this thing just fits the gears so well. Um, so if you can find this, like I said, I'm pretty sure I got this at Harbor Freight, but anything that looks like this will work. Um, this does the same job for removal, but the difference is this will actually install a gear too. It will press it on. I don't have a stock distributor here to show you guys how the gear would go back on, but what I will do is kind of give you a basic rundown. 
of how it would work if you can imagine. Um, basically this C channel bracket, the intent of this bracket right here is to go around the distributor housing and the shafts, the very top part of the shafts of, of the distributor rotor will butt up against the center of this C channel. So your C channel, so your housing of your distributor will be cradled in here in these 90s and the top of your distributor shaft will be a dead stop right here. And what this will do <clears throat> is it will allow you to press the gear on using this threaded rod portion while this collar wraps around the distributor hold down area. It will clamp around the distributor hold down area with a downward motion as the gear is being pressed on going upwards and to prevent the whole shaft from going through distributor housing, the shaft is dead stopped right here. So that's how that works. So it would be set up a lot like this. Uh, there's an O-ring in this parts kit. That O-ring is meant to clamp around the two half moons. <clears throat> Once they're around your distributor hold down base, and there's a bump stop, a rotational bump stop that goes in the end of the threaded rod portion to, you know, protect the end of the uh, distributor shaft where the um, oil pump drive shaft goes. So anyway, that's a rundown of how all this stuff works. But again, very handy tool to have. They're not that expensive. Again, I don't, I don't think you can find them new. Uh, you can buy them used though. Just make sure it has all the parts with them. And uh, you'll have a much easier time working on distributors with all this stuff. So, well, there you have it. Not too bad, right? Um, once again, I highly recommend getting those Motocraft pickups uh, and I uh, hope you get one of these tools. Uh, you don't have to have the Thextons, but uh, they definitely help out. But anyways, thanks for sticking around and uh, we'll see you at the next one.